And David joins us now. And I mean, that is the question, really, is it how and why? Why politics? Well, I'm, I'm, I'd worked the nostalgic market and I was out touring with uh, Bjorn again at Christmas and uh, Plano 2 at Shepherd's Bush Empire and other places. But I just wanted to feel sort of relevant in today's world doing something and, and contributing to something. That you were going to make a change. Because you said that actually reality TV, your reality TV was political programming and that you kind of, you were watching an awful lot of that and politics was something you were being... Oh, yes, towards. that's right. I was watching all the Andrew Marr shows and um, Pest, uh, Peston. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, right, I've got that right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and um, Politics Live and all the, all the sorts of shows. They were sort of to interest me more than the general soaps, to be honest. Mm. Right. You know, I mean, the best soap in town is Brexit. <laughs> well, going I mean, on you, in Parliament. Yeah. you um, uh, were elected uh, last month, a local councillor in Thurrock by, in a by-election with an impressive 16.4% swing, uh, stood for the Conservatives in the Avely and Upland Ward on Thurrock Council. It's a, it's a big swing. It's a wonder, uh, currently, with the politics that we've got, that anyone went out to vote in the first place. But um, you say you can offer a different sort of politics to what we've got? Well, at the moment, in, in uh, Avely and Uplands, and oh, in the whole of Thurrock, actually, the Conservatives, who lead the council there, have frozen the council tax. We've managed it well and got a, a very good surplus. So we will be giving it back to the people of um, Thorock. Right. And you say, I mean, these are your words, not mine. You're saying the fact that you had, you were voted in and there was such a swing towards the Tories just shows how, how much people are disillusioned, really. Yeah, on the door, of course, they're very angry about Brexit. There's no doubt about that. And what I had to do was try to get them to focus on uh, local issues. Such and, and in Averley, we've got an HGV problem uh, with, because it's a village with them um, travelling through the village as a rat run, mm. um, avoiding the M25 and A13. So you distracted them away from Brexit, have you? I tried to. Yeah. yeah. In fact, I was persistently Brexit. consistent <laughs> and consistently. <laughs> Political joke. <laughs> and consistently persistent. Um, I probably wa walked 35,000. Uh, 30, yeah, 35,000. 35,000 steps? A lot. A lot of steps. Yeah. Yes, right. Yeah, 35,000 steps. Yeah. Uh, a day for a month. Going back to people two or three times. Yeah. Warning them if they don't vote for me, I'll be back. Now, they, were, <laughs> they were a little bit concerned, weren't they, that you might have some uh, skeletons in the closet, the Tory party, but a lot of yours have been sort of widely publicised anyway. I mean, being in the public eye, it's all kind of. Out kind there. of, it's all kind of out there. Yeah. I mean, they would say at the end of a, an interview, uh, is there anything possibly that could embarrass this party. And I said, absolutely everything. <laughs> but it's all out there. Mm. It's all dealt with and done. And so they were happy with that? I know they're happy with it, but that gives me lots of tools for dealing with people who've gone through those situations, yeah. you see. That's so I have an experience. What we're sick of, I think the public are sick of, is experts. You know, they're not getting it right. And they, I think they want somebody to speak plainly to them, and yeah. that's what I try and do. Um, the public reaction, obviously, seems obviously with your election, seems to uh, seems to be very good. Um, you have stood before, but you failed, and there was actually a misplaced joke there, wasn't yes, there? Yes, it was. Yes, very much so. It was in the uh, it was in two thousand and seven. I stood as really as a paper candidate in a socialist ward, which the Conservatives would never have won. But I was there to make up the numbers and get some PR for the party. It had been a Labour council at the time, and after that election. It went to a, a Conservative uh, council. Yeah. So um, it was a misplaced joke, a, yeah. a, a homosexual joke, which was misplaced. But but uh, but you said actually um, it was a cautionary tale, and you've learnt a lot from that. You've got to remember, I was born in the fifties, brought up in the sixties, and through to the seventies, things were very very different. So I've had to adjust my language and and and, and all the sort of humour that yeah. would have come out of those that period. And I have, and I apologise for it, and I think that cleared it up. Are you a Lever or a Remainer? I'm a Lever. Why? Well, um, I, I, I really want to make our own destination. So I don't really want to be told by people abroad what we should be doing here. It's not the straight bananas, they don't worry me too much. You know, the things that come out of the EC and things like that. Um, and um, I also think Europe's probably going to be in a lot of trouble. I mean, um, they're going to bleed us dry. So do you... What, I mean, what would you do then? Because there is no doubt there's a lot of confusion out there. If you were put in charge, uh, well, how would you make a change? Well, this should have all, we should have been in this position two years ago. We should have gone to them and said, this is what we want. We should have known what we want, gone there. And then we should, and then said, well, it, we'll give you a three, f two or three months, see how you get on with it. And if you don't get, 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 uh, come back with anything positive, we'll get on with uh, 
organising for the next two years an orderly Brexit, mm -hmm. which that's what should have happened. Now I think probably we should just take uh, Theresa May May's deal. Well, there's no chance of that happening, is there? Well, I don't know. You, it's not over yet. She's had it back three, four times. Well, in various bits as a whole and in bits. Could yeah. you have done better? Well, I, would, I, I don't think so, really, because I'm just a novice politician at the moment, of course. But maybe I'll learn over the next couple yeah, of years. Yeah, but you've watched Peston. Yeah. <laughs> and and Jabal. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So, politically... And this week... <laughs> uh, your uh, ambitions, where do they lie? I mean, is this... My political ambitions... Local politics, or right. one day will we be seeing you... No, week? local politics for the moment. Yeah. The, the, the people of Averley and Uplands have voted me in, and I hope to be their servant, not their masters, like what's going on in... But you've, did you have off in the distance with a little flag on it, with a dollar, dollar flag on the top of it, Downing Street? Well, who knows? If you can get Trump in, as president of the <laughs> USA, David Van Day could be prime minister. <laughs> Vote for me. <laughs> thank you very much. It's lovely thank to you. see thank you. Thank you. So good. good luck with it all. Oh, thank you very good much. Luck.